Hi guys, I apologize for my lack of videos. Um, just been really tired lately and I feel like there's not really that much interesting going on week to week. We're in the final stretch and um, there haven't been any significant changes. So I just been feeling like every couple weeks was appropriate for filming. If I turn this light off, it'll be better. Just a little bit. <laughs> I'm in my basement, so um, that made it worse. Nah. Um, so as I film this, I believe I am 33 weeks and six days. So I'm almost to the 34 week mark. Um, as far as symptoms, um, her movements have been a lot more not painful, but definitely uncomfortable and sharp at times. Um, there's been a couple days where I swear she was just like living up by my ribs and it, it like hurt to move. Uh, I've been having, I just, her movement in general, it feels very strong. Um, I feel, you know, and you like see my, I can see like my belly moving back and forth and seeing her move. Uh, and I also have Kind of like I would say it's definitely on the verge of discomfort pain um, like a tightening of my abdominal muscles but it's only on one side or the other and I talked to my midwife she said it's nothing to worry about it's um just everything expanding uh, the other newer symptom I have is a lot of pelvic pressure which I had my doctor's appointment yesterday and I asked them you know is that common because I thought that's rather early in a pregnancy to be feeling that. I feel like she probably shouldn't have dropped by now. They said, no, that's common by now and not to worry. So that was reassuring. Um, other symptoms, having trouble sleeping because I just, I boil at night. I get so hot and that's very unusual for me. I'm usually quite cold. So I just get so hot at night that it's hard to sleep. Um... And then the rest of the day, like the day, the part of the day where I need to be awake or whatever, I'm just so exhausted. I feel like I'm constantly yawning and it's tough for me to get anything done. So uh, that's my major symptoms. I'm still struggling with back pain and what feels like a pinched nerve back there. So I'm going to schedule some more chiropractor appointments for the last few weeks here because the last adjustment I had really did seem to help alleviate some discomfort. Um... As far as baby, she is um, four to five pounds, somewhere in that range, and 17 to 19 inches long. Uh, something I read s said that there is more baby than amniotic fluid now, and that's one of the reasons why like her kicks and jabs and movements are more uncomfortable these days. Um, what else is going on with her? I know that she can see, like, differentiate light now and hopefully kind of differentiate day and day and night. And I believe this time frame is, uh, like, a major development, brain development phase. So, phase. So, I'm really trying to eat healthy, um, get rest, and take care of myself. Uh, I mean, I always do, but... I've been very trying to be proactive about that. What else do I have to update you on? As far as life, um, I definitely, I, I definitely had some major nesting. Um, I'm always, I love to clean my house and organize my house. Um, but finally, this past weekend, um, Memorial Day weekend, um, with my new job, it's the first job I've had in a long time where I have holidays off. So my husband and I both had a three-day weekend. And I decided, especially with all the fatigue that I have had, exhaustion really, it's been difficult for me to get my cleaning and organizing projects completed. So I said, you know what? This is the weekend I'm going to do it. I'm going to clean the car. I'm going to clean the house top to bottom. I'm going to get all my organization projects done, um, etc. And I'm. this is the weekend to do it. So we got a lot accomplished and my husband was such a huge help. So, um, like our car, I get that all cleaned and detailed and my husband installed the car seat and that took him a while. It was quite a project, but, um, feels good to have that in there. I, um, 
almost finished packing up and gathering stuff for my hospital bag that I think I'll take another week or two to finish up and then I'll do a video on it. Um, but I do have, just in case there was an emergency or she came really early, which hopefully she won't, hopefully she'll stay healthy. I do have everything kind of in one area. It's not perfectly packed and I mean, if it was a true emergency, we would just be grabbing everything and hoping we had what we wanted and needed. Obviously the car seat's the most important part. But I have that all in the nursery in a corner, and I told my husband, like, this is where, this is what you need to bring. Um, I finished my birth plan, and my husband and I went over that and, you know, got it to where we agreed upon it. And I took that to my doctor's appointment last week, but I had, um, I actually saw the doctor this week and not a midwife. And the nurse that, you know, checks you in or whatever, she's like, yeah, the doctor probably won't take time to go over that with you. And since you're a midwife patient, you ideally should have them go over it. So, um, she said, just bring it in in a couple weeks. So, I will take the birth plan in in a couple weeks, give them a copy for to keep in my file, and then also give a copy to the midwife um, and see what her thoughts are and see if my wishes, um, I mean, my husband's wishes um, will mesh with hospital policies policies and how they do things. It's very important that I have a lot of fear and anxiety about going to the hospital. Initially, I wanted a home birth, but my husband wasn't comfortable with that. And I did see his point. The closest hospital is about half an hour away from our house, and it's not a very good hospital. So any kind of emergency situation, I wouldn't want to be taken there. And that would mean I'd have to be shipped off to a hospital, or the baby would have to be shipped off to a hospital that's an hour away. The hospital I go to right now is an hour away. We live very um, in a very small town, pretty rurally. So <clears throat> I see the the point in needing in you know the advantages of being in a hospital if you live that far away, um, in case of emergency. And since this is our first time, you know. However, I still do have a lot of anxiety. A lot of that anxiety I can't explain. But I knew part of that anxiety is simply from working in a hospital and seeing the behind the scenes part of things and having my, my control and my power taken away, having my voice taken away and not being, not having my wishes respected and being pressured into feeling like this is our policy. You have to do it or it's the highway, um, you know, or using scare tactics. I know at least we're. You know, I know that sometimes scare tactics get used. I do have trust in my midwife um, and both midwives I've seen. But like I said, there's still some fear and anxiety there. So I'll be really curious to see how she responds to my birth plan um, in a couple weeks. It is a little lengthy, so hopefully she'll have enough time to read it and go over it with me. The next appointment that I have, um, they'll be doing the group B strep um, screening and a mini ultrasound, as they call it. Um, the mini ultrasound is just, they said it's a real quick ultrasound to see if baby is head down. And if baby's not head down, then we can talk about external cephalic conversion or something like that. Um, the group B strap is a routine um, swab. Um, and I'm not sure how I feel about that. If you're positive, then they require you to be on antibiotics. And I read mixed things, but I, I haven't done a whole lot of research because I'm kind of like, I'm not going to spend a bunch of time researching it, planning on the fact that maybe I am a carrier or whatever, because 20 to 30, I believe 20 to 30 percent of women are carriers. Um, sorry, I really, it just, so I'm just going to tackle that as it arises, you know, hopefully, fingers crossed, um, that will not be the case and I won't have to worry about it. I think that's about all the major updates that I have. I will show you a, a bump, <laughs> a bump update. Let me fix this maternity band thing. So ready for non-maternity clothes. I'm so tired of wearing maternity clothes. Um, and I'm tired of being uncomfortable and, you know, like having to struggle to flop side to side in the bed and get out of the couch and... I just feel huge, so everyone says, oh, you don't look that big, so that's comforting to know that other people don't think I look that big, and actually this shirt is better, like it doesn't make me look as big, but
but I feel very, very large. I'm only five foot two, less than five foot two, technically. I'm between five foot one and five foot two. And my structure is fairly petite on, um, anyway, that's baby girl. But I feel this is quite large. I feel huge. Um, from what I'm used to, I'm used to being very active and exercising a lot. And <laughs> it's definitely been tough with the exhaustion and having difficulty breathing and all that lately. So I'm ready for her to come. <laughs> if she wants to come a week or two early and still be healthy, of course, I am all for that. The idea that I still have another five or yeah, five or six weeks left. Um, I guess six weeks technically, because I'm almost to the 34 week mark. Um, the idea of six more weeks is just, it's agonizing. It's like, oh my God, uh, it's a long time. But I know I'll get through it. I mean, the time really has gone by pretty fast if I think about it. It seems like just the other day I had found out and we, my husband and I were just spending days thinking about how things are going to change and planning and, you know, all of that. So I'll update you guys probably in a couple more weeks. Um, I'll try to keep remembering to take bump photos. Um, but yeah, I think every couple weeks, unless something more exciting happens, that's probably what I'll update. And I do have a few videos I want to publish, but it really all just depends on my energy levels and work and life. So I will try my best and I will see you guys soon.